Welcome to the Coast to Coast Podcast, brought to you by thelines.com. I'm your host, Nate Weitzer, here flying solo for a little bit here with my co-host, Josh Lander, out on vacation. But I will be joined tomorrow for Wednesday Slate by Mo Nawara, our specialist at the Lines, professional better and full-time contributor for the Lines. We've got best bets up. we got two picks, though, coming at you. We don't sleep on any weekdays. We bring you videos every single weekday through the regular season and the playoffs. Uh, so we got best bets and player props. Like and subscribe. You won't miss a video there. Let's get right into player props here on an 11-game slate for Tuesday. Um, and Donovan Mitchell, his prop only is 23 and a half points, and it's juiced up there uh, with the Cavs facing hosting the Mavericks. I will take an alternative line there. 26 points gets you plus 115 at DraftKings, for example. I think he's good for 25 plus at least. I, I mean, the trend says he's good for 28 plus is what he has in eight straight home games, averaging 35 in those games on a 35% usage rate. And maybe you're worried that Darius Garland is going to start ramping up. I mean, he got a little more action when, when Donnie missed two with the illness out of the all-star break. Uh, but I, I, it's still been monstrous usage for Donnie all year when Garland's been out there. It's still 31%, still scoring 27 and a half. For me, it's more about the matchup. Like, do they need him? And they're absolutely going to need him. Like, Dallas is, is is smoking hot. I know they lost the Pacers. But that offense, when it's clicking, it's, it seems like one of the hardest things to stop is, is Luka and then with a legit – uh, co-star alongside him and Kyrie who's playing very, very well. Even this Cleveland defense is going to have some trouble with Dallas. And that means Donnie's going to come right back in what projects to be a higher scoring game than usual for the Cavs. So the fact that he was quiet against Washington, classic, you know, not e- easy, you know, low scoring win for these Cavs as he came back from the illness does not indicate he's going to be quiet against Dallas. Uh, He's been forced to play 40 minutes per game. The two times he's met Dallas when he was with the Cleveland scored 29 and a half shot 54% from the floor. He is just red hot uh, before the all-star break. He was last 10, 29 and a half points again uh, and shooting 51 and 43% from the, from the floor and three point line respectively. I mean, Donovan Mitchell. And while this Mavs defense is improved like a lot with, with Washington and Gafford back there on the back line, it's still not a, you know, top 10 defense by any stretch of the imagination. It might not even be an above average defense uh, overall, especially with Luca at the point of attack, like Donnie, you know, he, he's going to respond in kind to the, the offense that those two guards are going to point out there. And, and he's got to hunt them on the other end, keep the Cavs in this game. That's just, Fully what I expect them to do. I mean, you look at the game log. If they play a a bad bottom feeding team, Mitchell's much less likely to have a big game than if they play the Bucks or you know any any team that seems like a true contender. Even if it's just like the Bulls, like a mid tier contender in the Eastern Conference, like Donnie can bring it and, and will bring it, and and the Mavs are very much a contender right now. Pick two. Let's go, Jalen Johnson. It's been a while since we went to the young kid. Uh, but with Trey Young now set to miss several weeks, I guess just the regular rest of the season, it's it's Jalen and Dejounte Murray uh, soaking up huge usage. Like Trey has been number two or three in terms of potential assists, passes made, etc. All season, like the ball is always in his hands. Usage is sky high. So I'm going to take the points and assists with Jalen Johnson here. Twenty two and a half is the number you get. I mean, you add 10 rebounds if you want to just take the whole bundle here, which he, he's been pretty good for in terms of getting a double-double. Utah's a really good rebounding team is the one hesitancy there, uh, but not as much lately. Um, and, and where they have been extremely vulnerable is giving up assists and points and and points to power forwards on the road. They allow the most points to power forwards. They allow 30 a game to the position. In their last 15, that kind of coincides with when they went smaller with John Collins in the starting lineup. So Jalen gets to go against that unit, uh, and, and they they allow a league-high 31 assists on the road, 123 points. You look at their last six road games, that's 36 assists per game and nearly 130 points per game. They just played at a 109 pace in their last game against the San Antonio Spurs. So this game with a 238 and a half total, you you got to go over if you're going anything. Honestly, you are not going under with my seal of approval uh, with, with the Jazz and Hawks 
tangling here. Even though Trey Young's out, and even though the Hawks were in a kind of lower scoring game, that was against Orlando in the first game without Trey. And Jalen was right there with DeJounte, you know, in terms of passes made. Uh, both were like top 15 marks in terms of anyone in the NBA in the last game. Jalen goes for 21, 10, and 7 in his in, in that first game without Trey. His previous one without Trey when he was out with a concussion in January, he went for 21 and 6 uh, in terms of assists at Golden State. Much tougher matchup, in my opinion. Um, home road splits since January, you know, a little bit more productive at home. 17 points, four and a half assists, which is just below this number, but that's on 18% usage. And his last four without Trey, at least 21% usage. We're looking at 22% against Orlando last time out. I think Quinn Snyder and company know it's about DeJounte and Jalen. And honestly, I think DeJounte probably just garners more attention at this point, And you get that secondary playmaking from Jalen Johnson. Plus, I mean, the number for DeJounte is 33 and a half versus this 22 and a half for Jalen Johnson. And I think we're really looking at a 1A, 1B in terms of who's having the ball in their hands going forward for the Atlanta Hawks. Um, and, you know, so for for that 11 points slash assist of value, let's go with Jalen Johnson. It's a it's a plus matchup for both of them, though. Like, don't get me wrong, with, with Keontae George logging tons of minutes, if you want to hit DeJounte, uh, go for that as well. But I think both these guys are going to continue to have productive games in the wake of that Trey Young injury. That's all the time we have for you today in Player Props. Also got best bets up. If you can find that on the lines.com, like and subscribe. You won't miss a uh, video here as we continue to bring them through the regular rest of the regular season into the playoffs. So until we see you next, happy betting. Stop, 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 stop.